Hey everyone, Jordan Hetrick here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make awesome, amazing time lapses with the Insta360 X3. This is a fun and powerful camera and a great tool for creating time lapses. I'm sure you've seen a lot of time lapses in your favorite movies and TV shows. They're those really sped up videos that makes time look like it's faster than in real life. So I wanna show you how to get some really cool ones and share some of my favorite tips. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss my future videos. Let's get into it. So step one is to just plan out your shot. When you start thinking about creating a time lapse, just think about what kind of scenes would look good when played back faster than real life, because that's what a time lapse is. It's just playing back life, but in a faster speed. A few scenes pop into mind to me. I really love nature, so I think about clouds passing by, because you never see them go that quick, and a time lapse speeds it up. It's a great effect. I also love to see the light changing and shadows passing across the land. But if you're in the city, for example, you might be able to film some scenes with like people moving through an intersection or cars moving by. It really just depends on your own creativity and what you want to see. I would love to hear your guys' comments below to let me know like what your favorite subjects are when you're filming time lapses. And it might help give other people some ideas too. When you're planning out your time lapses, you also want to think about lighting. Lighting has a big effect on the landscape. And if you're shooting scenic landscape time lapses, you want to get the best lighting possible. I really like recording time lapses during the morning or evening when that sun is lower and you got more drama on the scene. However, you can record your time lapses any time of day and they're going to look good no matter what. However, you want to have some puffy clouds in the sky, but you don't want to shoot when there's just like a blanket of gray clouds. It just ends up looking a bit washed out, especially with that wide angle lens on the Insta360 X3. Step two is to set up your camera. And this is actually more important than you might realize because these lenses on the X3 are so fragile. You wanna make sure that you set your camera up in a nice stable position that won't get knocked over. And also because you're recording those longer duration time lapses, you want your camera to be in a nice secure spot that can be okay with changing weather conditions. Where I live in Maui, it's really windy all the time. So I have to be extra careful when setting up my camera. I've actually had it blow over before because I haven't set it up properly. And if it does, it can land on those lenses, scratch them, and your camera will get ruined. So you just want to make sure that you've got your camera in a nice, secure spot. It's really important when you're making time lapses using this mode that your camera doesn't move at all while you're recording. If you're not dealing with any wind, you can just go ahead and set it up on an extension pole like this and then use these monopod feet and set it there on the ground and you'll have no problem. But once the wind comes into play, that camera can get blown over pretty easily. If you think it might be windy during your time lapse, you can take it off of the extension and just put it straight on a monopod base and that's gonna have less leverage and won't blow over as easily. You can also put your camera on a clamp mount with an extension pole and clamp it to an object and then it's in a nice secure spot and you can get some cool time lapses that way. And that works great for nature shots or if you're in the city, for example, you can clamp it onto a street pole. Also, if you are mounting it on monopod feet like these and you can get those feet to disappear from the view of the shot, that's gonna help even more when you go to edit. For example, if you're mounting it on the beach, you can just bury those in the sand. They're gonna be gone from view, and then you can rotate down to the ground and they're not gonna be in the shot, and the camera is gonna really look like it's floating. Also, because the Insta360 X3 records a full 360 sphere, you wanna look around your scene and look for different things that you can use when you go to edit your video, because you can rotate your view around and really create some cool effects that way. Also, you wanna remember that the Insta360 X3 lenses are super wide angle. So when you place your camera in a scene, you wanna have something kind of close to it to provide a sense of depth to your shots. If you have your camera just in the middle of a field and there's nothing near it, it's not gonna have much depth and when you go to zoom in, everything's just gonna be far off in the distance and not look as dramatic. The battery on the X3 only lasts a couple hours max. So if you are recording longer time lapses, you're gonna to wanna to use external power to power your camera. You can use a portable power bank connected to your camera with a USB cable to power your camera for a day or even multiple days, depending on the capacity of that power bank. For short time lapses, it doesn't matter. You've got plenty of battery life for the shorter ones. You just wanna make sure that if you do use a USB cable, you've got the cable in line with the camera so it's gonna be out of the shot and not in the way when you go to edit your videos. As far as storage, you don't need very much storage on your micro SD card because those time lapses are really just recording a short video like 30 seconds or one minute. It doesn't take up very much storage on your micro SD card. Now that you've got your camera set up, it's just time to choose the settings. So go ahead and turn your camera on by pressing the power button on the side of the camera. There are a few different modes on the Insta360 X3 that record time-lapse style shots, but I'm gonna help you guys with the easiest one, which is time-lapse mode. So you can just go on the screen here and swipe over to time-lapse mode. 
And the reason that this is easy is because it outputs automatic videos, so you don't have to go and edit those photos. You can also speed up regular videos for a time-lapse look, which works okay for short videos. But the time-lapse mode has a few major benefits. It doesn't require as much battery because you're not recording as many frames. The files are a lot smaller and easier to deal with than trying to speed up a really long video. And also, because it doesn't use stabilization, you can take advantage of that full 8K video resolution on time-lapse mode, which outputs really clear, beautiful 4K videos. For some of you who are more advanced, you might want to use the interval setting and edit those photos in Lightroom. Using that interval mode is more complicated. You have to use Lightroom and Premiere. It's a little more on the professional side. So you guys could let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to do a video on that and I can see what I can do. But for now, I just want to help you guys get some tips for creating the best time lapses and the easiest way possible is to use this time lapse mode. Also, one of the great things about this is some of the settings available here, which I'm going to show you right now. So as far as settings go, you can just tap here and tap on the settings. And we're going to go with the 8K resolution. That's going to give you a lot of editing flexibility when you go to edit your videos, and I'll show you why when we get there. As far as frame rate, I'm going to choose 30, but you could choose 24. It just depends on your preference of what you're going to be outputting your videos to. This interval setting here is one of the most important settings in the time lapse mode because that determines how often your camera is going to take basically a photo. So when you record a regular video, your camera is recording about 30 frames per second, depending on your settings. So it's recording 30 photos in that one second. And that just makes regular video. By choosing the interval, it's going to space out the photos and it's going to take one photo at whatever time interval you choose. So if you choose two seconds, it's going to take one frame every two seconds. And then when you go to play it back, it's going to play a lot faster because it's combining all of those into a video. It's a little bit complicated, but the most important thing is to know that these shorter intervals are for shorter recording times. If you're going to record, say, a 10 minute video, you're going to want to use a shorter interval. For shorter recording times, I like to go with the one or two second interval. It's just going to give you that time lapse look in a shorter recording time. You can always speed up the time lapses later when you go to edit, but it's nice to start out with something close to what you're looking for. But if you want to record a full day, for example, you'd want to go to a longer interval that's going to give you less frames and your time lapse is going to be shorter. I grabbed this chart out of my X3 book to give you a reference of how long you need to record at each different interval to get one second of video. I thought that would be helpful for you guys. And once you're done with those settings, you can just swipe down. And then over here, there's a few manual settings you can change. I'm going to go here to the manual settings on the top and change a few of these settings. I'm going to go with vivid color. If you don't want to edit your colors on your own, you can just go with vivid and it's going to give you nice color straight out of the camera. Then you want to go with auto shutter. ISO, I'm going to keep it down to 100. Now that's going to give you the highest quality images during daylight hours. If you are recording time lapses around sunrise or sunset, I recommend going over to max 400. That's going to allow the camera to adjust a little bit if there's some lower lighting conditions. Once you get into the higher ISOs though, your footage is going to come out grainy and it's not really worth it. For white balance, I'm going to go to 5500 and that's just going to keep a nice consistent color throughout your videos if you're recording in daylight. If you're going to be in a lot of changing lighting conditions, you can just go to auto, but I like this for consistent toning on my videos. And then you can go ahead and swipe out of that. Those are the only settings you need to change. Of course, there are other settings here you can play with, such as the shutter speed, but for right now, this will get you going. Also, if you're enjoying this video so far, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like. It just helps other people also find this video. Thanks so much. So once you've planned your shot, it's time to hit that record button and start recording your time lapse. What's really nice here is you can see the recording time and you can also see the playback time of your resulting time lapse. However, you'll see it hasn't even gotten one second of video yet. That's because it needs to take 30 frames before you even get one second of video, depending on your frame rate you chose. The key to great time lapses is not creating a lot of movement with your camera but really just being patient, let the camera do the work. And when you go to edit, you can create some nice, slow, subtle movements that are gonna create that cinematic effect. Also try to stay out of the scene when your camera's recording. You can hide behind something, but that way when you go to edit your time lapses, you have the full rotation to look at without you being in the shot. Unless of course you wanna be in the shot, then get in there. Also while we're watching these beautiful time lapses, if you want some more ideas, help, and inspiration on how to use your Insta360 X3, I've created a very useful book for you that you can have in your hand as a reference anytime you need it. The link's in the video description below, so go ahead and get yourself a copy, and I know it'll help you out a lot. Now that you've got your time lapse recorded, editing is where you can get really creative with your Insta360 X3 footage. Because the X3 records a full sphere in that 8K resolution, you just have so much video to work with, and you can create some really cool movements in your time lapses. You can use the Insta360 app on your phone or tablet, but I want to show you guys on Insta360 Studio on a desktop, 
the way to get the highest quality footage possible and really take advantage of that full 8K resolution that you recorded in. Some of you might want to just keep your videos in full 360 so people can view them with the VR goggles, and that's a cool thing to do too. But I'm going to show you how to reframe your videos for a regular traditional video format. Just connect your X3 to a computer using a USB cable, or you can remove that micro SD card and put in a slot if you have one. Once you've connected your camera, just power it on and open up the Insta360 Studio app. Next to the time lapses you recorded, you'll see a little icon that indicates that it was a time lapse. So you can just click on that and open the file up to start editing it. Editing these time lapses is really fun and creative because you can create multiple edits from the same time lapse and it'll look totally different. The first thing I usually like to do is just play the video. It won't play as smoothly as it does when it exports, but you can get a preview of kind of what it's going to look like. And select your in and out points just by dragging these little sliders here. Then you just want to go to the beginning of the video and start adding keyframes. A keyframe is just a marker of the different effects you're applying to this video. So I'm just going to apply one here at the beginning and then move to the end of the video and apply another keyframe. And now when I play that video, it's going to move from one keyframe's effects to the next. You can add multiple keyframes throughout the video, it just depends on the look that you're going for. I recommend adding slow movements and trying to go with nature's elements if you can. For example, if the clouds are moving a certain direction, you can have your scene also rotating that direction with them. But different people have different tastes, so go with what you like and have fun with it. You can also use this time shift tool here. So you just drag it onto the clip and adjust the length that you want that time shift applied. Now that can speed up your clips if you recorded a time lapse and it's too long, for example. You can use this to add speed up to 64 times the speed of your time lapse, which is already playing in fast motion. Another great feature of this time shift tool, even if you go at one time speed, is you can add motion blur. So it's going to create some motion blur between those frames just for more of a cinematic effect. If you do see a video that looks like this, that goes from a time lapse look into regular or slow motion video, that's actually not a time lapse video, that's more of an editing trick. But let me know if there's any interest in making a video like that and I'll see what I can do. Once you're finished making all of the edits and your time lapse looks like you want it to, you can just hit this export button here. Now I like to export them in 4K and it's set right here by default to a 1080 video. So if you just go ahead and type in 3840, the other dimension is going to be entered automatically. And if you're exporting it to bring it into Premiere or DaVinci or another editor, select ProRes here. That's going to give you the highest quality export. Give it a name, click export, and your time lapse will start exporting. And now that you've exported it as a 4K video, you've got a reframe video ready to put anywhere. Step six is to just share your time lapses. So you can add these into your B-roll if you're making YouTube videos or post them to social media. They also work well as transitions in movies and TV shows. You'll see them all the time. And that's just because they add a sense of place and a really cool sense of movement throughout these shows. I hope that video gives you guys some inspiration and some useful tips on how to create amazing time lapses with your X3. I'll put some more links to other videos here and also be sure to check out the book for the Insta360 X3. I know you'll find it useful. Thanks so much and have a great day.